what would you rather have? A hundred dollars today or a hundred dollars a year from now? Okay, so very simple question. If you're still with me, I know it's been a long time, we'll, and we'll all stop in 15 minutes. But I, I'm going to give you the option. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars. Would you rather I give it to you today, or would you rather I give it to you a year from now? So everyone's saying today, right? Thank good. So, so good participation. Thank you. Everyone's saying today, and. Um, could someone type concisely the reason why? Why is, is I'll tell you it's the right answer. Right? So if you're still thinking about it, stop thinking. I'll tell you the right answer. You, you would rather have $100 today than you would a year from now. Now, I know sometimes people say, oh, but I'll just spend it and I'll waste it now. I, 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 I know I'm going to need it, in a, but forget about that. We're going to talk about uh, the reason from a finance point of view why a hundred dollars today is better than a hundred dollars a year from now. And some people are typing some things about um, nothing in the future is uncertain, printed money, it could grow. The buying power of a hundred dollars now is stronger than a year from now. Okay. And, and there was another one about um, oh, there, there, a good interest rate. Someone saying inflation, compound interest in investments. Okay. Okay. Stop typing. Or if your tuition is due soon, okay, that's okay. The the answer, the reason why a hundred dollars today is worth more than a hundred dollars a year for now, for the purpose of this part of the course, okay, that's very important. Is that if I give you a hundred dollars today, you can find an investment that earns interest. And then a year from now, you'll have more than $100. Okay, so, and the way that we draw that, I mean, I'll just use, I'll, I'll use my time, my, my cash flow diagram. We haven't formally introduced it, but this is a pretty simple one. Our, our cash flow diagram, we'll just have a time now, which, which is time, we call it T equal to zero. That's our convention in this course. And then we have time T equal to one. That's a year from, a year from now. Right? So we'll just say one year. And if I give you $100 today, you receive, that's an up arrow, you receive the $100. And now let's say you find an investment that earns 10% interest. If you earn 10% interest, that means a year from now, you have $110. Okay, it really is just that simple. Some people always talk about inflation when I talk about, you know, what's better at $100 today, $100 a year from now. So the people who said, oh, $100 will buy you more today than it will a year from now, that's true because generally speaking, prices for things go up over time. We call that inflation. But I want you to just hang on to that idea for a second we're gonna separate these two things. So there's, there are two factors that come in here. Um, the factor that I've shown up here is interest and the concept that you can earn interest over time. Uh, the other reason why $100 today is better is in fact because of inflation, right? And both of these two things are factors, but for the next, eight or nine weeks, I want you to just forget about inflation. We will talk about inflation, but for now we're gonna forget about it, okay? So we're just gonna basically erase that idea of in inflation and price changes. We're gonna simplify the world for a second, and we're only gonna talk about interest because interest and the idea of earning interest is what underlies the beginning part of our time value of money math. The other important thing to realize from this very, very simple question, I mean, it's a, in many ways, have you ever played the game, would you rather, okay, you know, would you rather do something, uh, anyway, it, this is really a game of would you rather, would you rather have $100 today, or would you rather have $100 a year from now? Well, 
in the game of would you rather in this part of the book this part of the course this chapter chapter two you have it you rather have it today because you can earn interest a couple of takeaways however if i presented the problem as would you rather have a hundred dollars today or a hundred and ten dollars a year from now knowing that you could earn 10 percent interest what would the answer to the question be all right so what would you rather have a hundred dollars today a hundred and ten dollars a year from now if you knew you could earn 10 percent interest what would you rather have would anyone care to try and answer that one people still say today someone still says today someone says the 110 a year from now someone say take the 110 okay the, the, the right answer to the question, again, for the purpose of this course, and remember, we're only talking mathematical. Take all the human stuff out for a second, right? Someone has now said the correct answer. Thank you very much. Wouldn't it be the same? And the answer is, for the purpose of this course, yes. We've reached the point of what we call equivalence. So if I ask the question, 110, 100 now, 110 a year from now, knowing the interest rate is 10%, the answer is I am indifferent. And that is, it doesn't matter to me, financially speaking, it does not matter if you give me the 100 now or the 110 a year from now, okay? Um, there is a bit of uncertainty, yes, but assuming that the 10% is 100% for sure, a given, it's definitely gonna happen. This is, this is the concept that we call equivalence. Okay, and we'll use the concept of equivalence in this course because it allows us to move dollar amounts through time and adjust them by the appropriate interest rate. And as you'll see, that's sometimes useful. Let me use a very important example from my own life. And that is, you know, if I was, I, I was tasked with going out and trying to uh, figure out how much to pay for a company, well, I have to look at that company, look at its future potential, how much cash is it going to generate in the future? Then if I had all of that cash today, what's the interest rate that I would use? Let, let's say, what, what would be a competitive interest rate where I could invest that money elsewhere at about the same amount of risk as this company? That's getting a little complicated, but suffice it to say, what I need to do is take future cash flows from those companies and move those dollar amounts back in time to today to figure out how much I, I should suggest we should pay to buy that company, okay? That's called a net present value valuation method. But all through engineering economics and all through this course, um, we're gonna use this concept of equivalence and, um, and the fact that you should be indifferent between these two choices if the interest rate is known mathematically for the purpose of the course okay so that's that's important um, the other things that you should notice is that when we have interest rates dollar amounts get bigger when we go into the future dollar amounts get smaller when we come back in time and when we move dollar amounts back in time we have a special jargon word we call that discounting it, it doesn't mean, you know, Walmart pricing or anything like that. It doesn't mean it's you're getting a deal. Discounting is the jargon word for bringing dollar amounts back in time and making them smaller by the interest rate. Okay, so, so if, you, if you see a term discounted cash flows, you'll see, that means we're bringing dollar amounts back in time. Um, so someone has said, kind of like calculating physics problems by assuming a system is in equilibrium. And I would say that that is a, a very good way of thinking about it. You could say that, you know, there is a balance here and $100 today is exactly equal to $110 a year from now at 10%. The equation is totally balanced. In fact, writing it like an equation will allow us later in the course to set the, the, the present and future values equal to each other at some unknown interest rate and allow us to solve for the interest rate. So converting it to an equation is ultimately what we'll end up doing. 
So that's a very good, a good way to think about it. You might look at this and now you're already bored and you say, boy, Mike, you've really, you've really killed this topic and talked about it way too much. Well, I have, but it's on purpose. And I can say this because I've taught this course 10 times. If you don't get this idea, then you're gonna be left behind because ultimately in this course, we're gonna start looking at, at cash flow diagrams that, that might start, that might look like this, where, where they follow some growth rate. And I might ask you, what's the equivalent present value of this series of future cash flows? Um, or we might have ones that follow a pattern, but then they have gaps in them. You know, what do we do there? Um, actually, that's not a really good way to do it. But, um, but you get the, the gist of it. Things can get quickly much more complicated from a mathematical point of view. So you think about what's happening up here, it's pretty simple. It's just the $100 times one plus 10% that gives us 110. Well, we'll derive all the formulas for all of these other different patterns of cash flows that allow us to do financial calculations on much more complicated things. And we use everyday financial instruments to illustrate how this math works. So we'll use things like car loans and mortgages and uh, bonds and other things like that, that will in fact mean something to you in your personal life. So, so anyway, that's, that's sort of the, the, the introduction to the time value of money. 